All right, we're going to get started into chapter four, where we're going to start first by talking about exponents and different rules that we have to use when we are doing operations with exponents, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Later on in chapter four, we're going to start talking about polynomials and classifying polynomials, performing operations with polynomials, evaluating polynomials, lots of different things to get us comfortable with polynomials because we are going to be using those for almost every other thing that we do in class and lots of other things in other math classes as well. Let's go ahead and start into section 4.1 and we're going to start talking about exponents and their rules or properties. And so if I give you this term 3x to the seventh, my little seven, that superscript there, is what we call the exponent. So Anytime I have that little number at the top, we say that that's the exponent, where the x would be the base of our exponent. So we have a base and is raised to a certain exponent. Now, we have a number in the front, possibly, uh, where we call that our coefficient. So it, the, in this example, the 3 would be our coefficient. Now, the 3 does have an exponent on that base. It's just a known invisible 1. Kind of like if we had, um, I don't know, x to the fourth. My x would be my base. My exponent would be my four. And then what number is my coefficient in this one? Well, it's an invisible kind of one there, right? And so we have base, exponent, and coefficient. Make sure you're comfortable with using those words as we go through um, these chapters. All right, so we're going to perform operations with exponents. We're gonna be adding things with exponents, multiplying things with exponents, uh, taking an exponent and raising it to another exponent. And then we're going to be even doing problems where we're dividing. And so we have to learn certain rules when we have exponents and we're doing those different operations. And I know in math there's all these different rules that we try to keep straight. And so I don't know about you, but it's helpful for me to kind of think of a saying or a trick to help me remember all of these different rules. It's kind of silly, but it does help. Um, you guys have probably heard of PEMDAS or even Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally to help us learn order of operations. Well, I've made up my own saying to help me remember the rules for exponents. It is, all night, my aunt ran mail downstairs. It doesn't make much sense, and it's kind of silly. You can make up your own if you'd like to, but that helps me remember the different rules for exponents. All night, my aunt ran mail downstairs. So I start with these letters, and these letters mean a few things. We're gonna learn a rule that anytime we're adding or even subtracting, what do we do with the exponents? We're going to learn a rule if we're multiplying exponents. We're going to learn a rule that if we're taking an exponent and raising it to another exponent, what do we do? And then we're going to learn a rule for dividing. Okay? All right. So when I add or subtract things with exponents, we do nothing with the exponents. Some of your teachers might say just to combine like terms. For example, if I have a 3x to the 4th plus 5x to the 4th, I'm adding these two terms together. And when I'm adding, I shouldn't do anything with the exponents. As long as they're like terms, I have an x to the 4th and another x to the 4th, I should be able to combine those like terms by doing nothing with the exponent, just kind of um, smushing those numbers together. So if I have 3x to the 4th plus a 5x to the 4th, I really just have a big old 8x to the 4th. I do nothing with the 4, I just combine my like terms. So that means if I was giving a problem where I'm subtracting the 2x cubed minus x to the fourth, because I'm adding or subtracting, I know I do nothing with the exponents. That means my exponents have to be the same in order to be able to combine those terms. And because an x cubed is not the same thing like term as just an x, then I can't combine those. And so I wouldn't be able to do anything with this problem. And I would have to just leave it the way it is. So I couldn't combine those because they're not like terms. All right, what happens then if I'm multiplying? Well, when I'm multiplying, I really take the terms, I combine them by adding their exponents. Let me show you an example. If I have a 2x times a 4x cubed, well, before when I was adding or subtracting, they had to be like terms. But when I'm multiplying, it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. I can just combine all of my like bases. So on this one, I would put my regular coefficients together. I would multiply those. 2 times 4 is 8. And then in this first one, I have one X. In this term, I have three X's. So how many X's do I really have all together? Well, I have X to the fourth. So if I were multiplying, I really am gonna take my like bases and I'm gonna add their exponents together. So I end up getting eight X to the fourth. Let's see if I'm raising to a power. Well, if I'm raising an exponent to another exponent, I'm really gonna multiply those exponents. For example, 
if I have x squared and I want to cube it, what that really means is that I have three of those x squareds. I have an x squared and another x squared and another x squared. That really means I have x to the sixth. Or I could just multiply those exponents together. All right, the last one. When I divide, when I divide things with exponents, like bases, I can really just subtract their exponents. Let me show you. If I have x to the fifth divided by x to the third, what I can really do is combine those as long as their bases are the same, and I end up subtracting the exponents and getting an x squared instead. So again, all night, my aunt ran mail downstairs. Anytime I add or subtract, I do nothing with the exponents, just combine like terms. When I multiply, I really add their exponents. When I raise to a power, I multiply the exponents. And when I divide like bases, I really subtract their exponents. We're going to talk about these different rules. We're going to apply these different rules as we go through our rules for exponents. Stay tuned for the next uh, few videos. We'll be doing the examples in this section.